Hello and welcome to a Shadow Reentry Progress Report in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. The audio you hear in the background is from SDS-1, the first shuttle launch, which I was listening to while running these tests during a live stream. It's not really relevant to what's going on visually, and I'll probably mute it during the non-launch segments, but it is a reminder that the 40th anniversary of the first shuttle mission, along with the 60th anniversary of Vostok 1, the first person in space, is coming up on April 12th. Now, people have been asking me about shuttle things recently, and I'm here to explain where I'm at. The re-entry script is far from perfect. I'm still working on it, but I'll share what I have a few days before April 12th so that you can all try it out on the day of the anniversary for better or for worse. Uh, I'll also share the config files for the shuttle that I have, but not the whole mod. I don't think I can share the model files or the texture files or anything like that. But the config files I at least have adjusted, so... I've messed around with them, but let me show you where we're at as sort of a cautionary tale before you get too excited. Uh, by the way, I'm well aware that other people will have better solutions than I have and will have landed everything perfectly, etc, etc. I absolutely don't want to hear about it. Go ahead and use their thing. <laughs> I don't want to know. Uh, I'm messing around with it. I'm interested in doing it myself. I'm not interested in having the solution handed to me. That's what some of you want. Uh, that's not what I want. I'm, I'm here for the journey, if you will. Uh, I'm here for the experimentation in the science. I'm only talking about mine at all because people keep asking me about it, and this seemed like a good time. Uh, so this launch was out of Cape Canaveral into the ISS inclination of 51.6 degrees, and we are aiming for a landing at the Cape. So same landing site. That's the easiest thing. Now... Coming down from the ISS inclination is not the easiest thing. And uh, we'll see one of the flaws here as we turn around to the re-entry attitude before hitting the atmosphere. And this is Columbia as it so happens. It says STS-1, but of course STS-1 did not go to a 51.6 degree inclination. Uh, that was just for the purpose of uh, preparing for later. Anyway, uh, see, it, it sort of overrolls here. It only does that from certain inclinations, weirdly enough. But basically the solution is to use caps lock here so that it doesn't wiggle around too much. But you have to release caps lock before it hits about 70 kilometers in altitude. Otherwise it won't have enough ability to control yaw. So we are on caps lock here. You can see 95 kilometers and it's taking a bunch of data on the screen there. And again, this is a KOS script. There are other ways of programming things in Kerbal Space Program, but this is a KOS script uh, managing the re-entry. For some reason, the rudder always gets hot. I don't understand it either. It seems like it should be the least likely thing to get hot, but there we are. And uh, we also do bounce up a little bit, uh, not out of the atmosphere, obviously, but um, it sort of coasts along and gets some lift. And that's a good thing because otherwise it would probably overheat. So this that's all intentional. It doesn't uh, it doesn't go too far up. It just sort of slightly bounces up a little bit here and there. Anyway, that does complicate things though. Here we are approaching Florida, and we do have overheating on the two OMS engines for some reason, but they don't actually end up blowing up. We can't go down any steeper than we are right now, really. Not too much anyway. Otherwise, we would have issues. So this is the best we can do. And there is the Cape. Uh, this is Katniss Cape Canaveral. It is a mod that requires real solar system. And I'm using the best textures for real solar system here. And But the mod only covers the Cape Canaveral area and makes it look good. So that's one thing. I also placed the shuttle runway from the old uh, real KSC pack. And so I placed some custom buildings from that. The script pitches down starting at 35 kilometers and gives me control at 15 kilometers. If I try and take control any earlier than that, it tends to go out of control. Uh, it does not like that. So that's the safest thing. And we'll see an example of that later on. Uh, but here I am just sort of going parallel to the runway. Well, not quite, but I wanted to get a little bit closer. And yes, I've got the landing gear out early as I turn around here. And I also turned a little bit uh, awkwardly, but we'll eventually make it here. Otherwise, uh, given that this is the most straightforward, well, not the most straightforward, but among the most straightforward possibilities, uh, it would not be worth even talking about if I didn't get to the runway at least once. 
uh, though it's a lot awkward landing. The shuttle bay is empty and we deliberately wasted fuel in order to get the fuel load down. Uh, Re-entry, you can only do if uh, you've got about 180 to 200 meters per second left, maybe a little bit more than that. But otherwise, the tail is too heavy, so you can't come back with a full fuel load. Uh, full OMS fuel load, I mean. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, ideally, I aim for 180 to 200 meters left over, and it needs 100 to deorbit. The rest is just for control during re-entry. If, if we could manage it for less, that would be great. We are launching out of Vandenberg here, you notice no Katniss Cape Canaveral here because this is Vandenberg, and we're going into a polar orbit this time, and the goal here is to launch out of Vandenberg and then land at Edwards. So this is radically different, polar orbit is a unique sort of deal, and off go the boosters. And the reason it's one reason it's unique is that it's so sensitive to the east-west rotation of Earth. Right, if you're going east-west yourself, if your path, path is like that, then when you hit the location that you're intending to reach, you tend to be relatively, your orbit tends to coast along that latitude for an extended period of time. Let me put it that way. When you're in a polar orbit, your orbit does not stay at a particular latitude for a long period of time, and the Earth is rotating around east-west, so Trying to phase correctly with the landing site is much more sensitive. And here you see the gap between Vandenberg there and Edwards to the right. That was the little airport icon there. That was manually placed by me using Kerbal Constructs. So that is a manual placement. But as you might be able to tell, we're not getting to it this time. Now on the reorientation before hitting the atmosphere, from this inclination it does it fine. Uh, you can see, I'll show you the whole reorientation, but it doesn't have that roll problem. It's dependent on what inclination you're coming back from, weirdly enough. I've done this many times now, and it's worse at the ISS inclination. <laughs> and it's nearly perfect at handling the roll coming back from polar orbit. Don't ask me why, it doesn't make any sense to me either. Uh, but it is one of the problems with trying to solve that, in that it's not consistent. Anyway, so here we are with re-entry, and of course, uh, I've already explained that we are actually going to be off east-west-wise, and so the shuttle is trying to turn to compensate for that, but I don't handle this very well. I need to work on how it handles it, but in terms of trying to get it to turn and do S-turns and all that business, I'm paranoid about it using too much RCS fuel, and so... It, it tends to be like that, that it uses too much. So it didn't really do a good job of turning towards the east. And we see Vandenberg still there. We haven't really moved to the east the way we needed to in order to hit Edwards. So I thought about trying to get to Vandenberg. And so I took manual control at this point by doing control C in the KOS window. But as far as trying to turn to Vandenberg, well, like I said, if you take control before 15 kilometers, it tends to not like it very much, especially if you deviate from the prograde vector at all. And that's the, this is basically what happens. And in order to regain control, basically the best thing to do is point at the prograde vector or point straight down and force the prograde vector to be there. And so that's what I do, and I decide to land on one of these islands. I think it's San Miguel Island, somebody said. Anyway, so that is the change of plans. And here, just sort of burning off some steam and coming down to the island. So in the video where I release the re-entry script, I'll explain what, how the re-entry script works. Here I'm just showing the results, but I won't talk too much about the results in that video. I'll talk about what we've got. Maybe I'll show, if I get a better result than what I've gotten here so far, maybe I'll show it. But if things don't radically change from what I show here, I'll just explain the script and let it be. Okay, so here we go, and the parachute's out. And yeah, well, at least it didn't die. So that is a good thing. And just a reminder of where we're at. 
So the problem is this did go a little bit too far along. Now, the landing at Cape Canaveral did not go long. It basically hit it exactly the way I wanted to. So that's a little bit of a conundrum as far as solving that. I'll have to add some additional factor based on the inclination. I don't know. Yeah, so that's that's an annoyance, the fact that it went too far south on that re-entry, even though it didn't go too far on the Cape Canaveral landing. So we are launching from Cape Canaveral again, as you can see, and this time I'm trying to hit Edwards launching from Cape Canaveral. And we are launching to a 40 degree inclination because that's what STS-1 did. So I'm trying to mimic STS-1, but we're launching with Atlantis for some reason. <laughs> so let's not parse that out too much, but uh, just to change things up, we did discovery on the one from Vandenberg to Edwards. But yep, here we go. And separation from the external tank. So again, the trick is phasing with Edwards properly, but this time I wasn't trying to calculate it myself. This time I was basing it on when they re-entered in real life in SCS-1. Unfortunately, I think I misread the situation in that it said that they went for 36 orbits, and so I thought I had to deorbit on 35th, uh, but really I should have deorbited on the 36th, I think. I think I was one orbit ahead, and, and you can see going to 40 degrees, it still has that roll issue, and we still have to do the caps lock thing. But um, yeah. So I think I was one orbit ahead of where we needed to be as far as the orbiting was concerned. And that's because they didn't actually complete the last orbit, right? Because it launched from Cape Canaveral and landing at Edwards, that orbit doesn't get completed. So I think I just misunderstood everything. Anyway, so here we are on re-entry. And as I've intimated, uh, it's not the script's fault, it is my fault for not bringing it down at the right time. And we are too far north. So Edwards is there, and we are there. You can see the north track. But we've already slowed down, we're probably going to land very close to this location. And since it's directly north, that's actually technically a good thing for the landing script. In other words, it's done mostly where it needed to be. As long as we had phased properly with Edwards, it would have probably gotten there is my assumption but I'll need to do better and here I take control at 15 kilometers and it still sort of goes out of control um, I think I don't know uh, here it is, is having a yaw issue that I wasn't quite attentive to it is a side slip to the left side there handling it so far but this gets yeah so it goes out of whack here. Not so much that I couldn't handle it, but there's some G-forces and obviously it's awkward. Uh, you'd have to cut this part out if you weren't like me and you don't include all the failures. So yeah, but I uh, got it back there. All right. So anyway, uh, for those who are interested, there you have it. That is the situation. I will continue working on it, and a few days before April 12th, I'll uh, release what I've got at that point. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.